So we are now one month into 2019 and I thought this would be a great time to share with you what I have been watching so far this year. So if you're wondering how I keep track of everything I do watch, let me tell you about Letterboxd. So if you like movies even half as much as I do, this app is going to be worth it for you. In the most simple explanation, it's kind of like a social media app where you can rate movies, log what you've been watching, you can follow your friends and other movie critics and see everything that they're watching as well. Depending on how thorough you are, you can really go deep into this. So, so far I've rated nearly 800 films and ever since I got the app, I've been keeping a diary tracking every time I watch a movie. Now I'm not going to go back to like every single year of when I watched what movie. But moving forward, it's kind of cool to see. Okay, on this day, I watched this movie, and now looking back at the month, it's easy to tell you guys what I've been watching. And let me just clarify, I am making no money from Letterboxd to talk about them like this. If you want to jump to a specific movie that I'll be talking about in this video, I'm going to leave timestamps down in the description. But really, I would just encourage you to watch this whole video. So the first movie that I got to see this year in theaters was Escape Room. So I love Escape Rooms. I love going to them. They're so much fun. And watching this movie made me feel like I would have rather just went to an escape room. This movie was like a combination of Final Destination, Saw, except just slightly not as good. Now it was entertaining. I'll give it that. And it, you know, they piqued my curiosity, I suppose. But the biggest complaint I have comes in the ending, which I'm not going to spoil, but it leaves on such a big cliffhanger that they believe that they're going to get more movies and even turn this into a franchise, which they're not. It's like the plot started by just a couple people going to an escape room, except this escape room wants to kill them. And by the end of the movie, it looks nothing like that. And if they do get a sequel, it's going to have nothing to do with an escape room. So I would just wait for DVD if you need to see this movie at all. The next movie I saw was If Beale Street Could Talk. This, without a doubt, is the biggest snub of the Oscars this year. When I was watching this movie, I was like, this is definitely an Oscar movie. Now, for some people, it's it's kind of a slow watch. There's a lot of dialogue. It's very heavily focused on the actors and their ability to convey what they're trying to say. But I really enjoyed it. It's not the type of movie that I'm going to revisit a lot. I don't even know if I'll watch it again. But the performances were incredible. And it's a shame that it's not nominated for more Oscars. Seriously, when I was watching this, I thought this was a shoe in for Picture of the Year. But I guess that just shows how much I know. But even despite that, it's a really moving story. We see the lives of this black community in an earlier time in America and just the struggles they go through. It's they deal with racism, specifically with the police in America. And it's a story that I think we've been seeing a lot of, especially this year, it seems like. But this one just felt so pure and so rich and really enjoyable to watch. Following that, I saw Bumblebee for a second time in theaters. I enjoyed it just as much as I did the first time. This movie is great. It's very 80s, and for some people that's a bad thing, but for someone like me who just adores 80s movies, it was perfect. That's really all I have to say about it. It's the best Transformers movie we've ever had. I also watched The Star is Born. Um, they put it back in theaters, I think, to kind of for more of an Oscar push. And I will say, the second time seeing it, I did enjoy it a lot more than I did the first time. Now, I already had a review on this, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about it. But I did like it more, and I think it's definitely going to win a couple Oscars. All right, Vice. I don't know how this is nominated for so many Oscars. So if you're not familiar with Adam McKay, he has directed one of my favorite movies ever, The Big Short. Vice is trying so hard to be like that, and it falls so short. Now, I'll give the actors credit because they do a phenomenal job, specifically Christian Bale. I mean, he nails this part, and the transformation he went through physically to play this role is just incredible. But I think more than anything, the editing and script of this movie just really didn't compliment him at all. Specifically, the narration and kind of the jumping back and forth through different time periods, it really doesn't do the movie any benefits. When The Big Short came out, it kind of taught us all a lesson about something that happened in American history that we all went through, but didn't really fully know what was going on and vice presents this story in the same way and yeah there are some new details maybe about the presidency and his time as vice president that we didn't know before but it's just not as interesting or groundbreaking as his other movie was ultimately a little boring i don't know how it's nominated for so many oscars so two movies that oh man i don't even know how to talk about these the two fire festival documentaries so the one is fire fraud and I, I think the other one is just called fire perhaps to tell you the truth i don't even know which one is on which streaming services but ultimately we have netflix who announces that theirs is coming out and then hulu just one-ups them and says no ours is out like right now days before yours is out so if you don't know anything about fire festival i don't even want to go into it watch the documentaries just Google it. But what I'm more interested about these two documentaries is the rivalry between Hulu and Netflix over them. Ultimately, I say if you're gonna watch one of them, you might as well watch both because while they tell parts of the same story, they kind of take it on different angles and you really get a better, fuller picture watching both of them. Now, both of them are so in controversy and that's the interesting part about it and it's 
going to make you feel really weird supporting either of them. The Netflix one is put on by Jerry Media. So Jerry Media, which if you haven't watched any of them yet, was a company that kind of helped promote Fire Festival. They pretty much did all the marketing and all the sponsorship, and they had a big part in it. Now, some of those same guys actually work for Netflix now, and they were the producers of this Fire Festival documentary. And essentially, the whole Netflix documentary is blaming Billy, who was the CEO of Fire at the time, and they kind of say, like, we had nothing to do with it, we didn't know what was going on, we were just a media company. And so that's where the Hulu one gets interesting, because the Hulu one also hits them very hard, blaming them for just as much. And so it definitely makes it seem like they just produced this Netflix documentary to kind of clean their hands from this. But then Hulu gets kind of sketchy because they actually pay Billy himself to have an interview for the documentary. So in one hand, you're kind of supporting the producers that it really helped put Fire Festival on and technically didn't know about the scam, I guess. Or you can support Hulu, who actually paid the CEO, who definitely knew what was going on and definitely was responsible for most of it. It's a tough situation, but again, if you're gonna watch one, just watch both of them. The Netflix kind of dives into more of the production and the day-to-day -day setup of what led up to the festival. And the Hulu one focuses more on Billy himself and kind of the history behind him, his other companies, and the whole scam and just the bigger picture of it all. Okay, let's talk about Serenity. I saw Serenity. Serenity, oh. I had no idea what Serenity was about. And if you don't know what it's about, I would encourage you, do not look into it at all if you're planning on seeing this movie. I watched the trailer after I saw this movie, and even the trailer gives away way too much. So it's hard for me to talk about this movie, other than the fact that the experience of watching it was very enjoyable, but thinking back on the movie, it was really bad. And it's surprising because it has a lot of A-list actors in this movie that I love. The script is really bad, the overall story is really bad, the ending is kind of twisted the more you think about it. But again, the experience of me sitting in the theater trying to figure out what's going on following, it was one of the best theater experiences I've had in the past year. So if you're into kind of just crazy movies where you don't know what's happening, you're kind of putting the pieces together, eventually figuring it out, might be a couple different plot twists. This movie's going to be for you. Just don't expect it to be good and don't overthink it because you are gonna find so many flaws in it. All right, on the basis of sex, I saw it as well. Now this is the biopic of RBG, not to be confused with the documentary titled RBG. This movie was solid. Felicity Jones and Army Hammer, always great. I think I kind of struggled watching this though because I'm kind of over biopics. I think Bohemian Rhapsody was the cutoff because lately we have been getting a lot of them. This one's good. It'll teach you some things. It's really inspiring. I doubt it's historically accurate because even as little as I know about the story, there were things that I noticed were a little off. But I mean, again, what biopic doesn't twist some things? So if history, politics, biopics, feminism, any of that interests you at all, you'll enjoy this movie. And if you hate literally all of those things, stay far away from this movie. All right, two more and then we're out of here. I finally saw Aquaman. At least I thought I finally saw it when I realized I already saw it a year ago when I saw Black Panther. No spoilers, but oh my goodness, this is the same exact story. Which isn't a terrible thing, because hey, Black Panther's Oscar nominated, right? Except Aquaman is not going to be Oscar nominated, because that script was really out there. But Besides that, I actually loved this movie. The action was incredible. The visuals were so amusing. It's still a DCEU movie, though. But, I mean, it's miles ahead of some of the other ones, like Justice League and Suicide Squad. But for just two and a half hours of action and dumb one-liners, this is going to get the job done. The last movie that I saw in January was Leave No Trace. So this actually came out in 2018, probably in like May or June, and I wanted to see it at the time and just never got around to it. And if I would have, this might have made my top 10 of that year. This movie tells a story about a father and daughter who live in the woods, and they kind of, in a way, choose to be homeless. The dad, who's a veteran, struggles with PTSD and really can't live around other people. But the father and daughter in this movie really sell their parts. The acting is so so amazing. This movie is another big Oscar snub in my opinion. It touches on a lot of different issues and it's kind of a slow burn with a lot of dialogue, but if you're looking for just some great acting and great script, this is a movie to definitely check out. So that's January 2019. It's been a good month for movies. Let me know what you've been watching down in the comments below. Let me know if you like anything that I mentioned or if you dislike anything I mentioned like Escape Room, and if you have any suggestions of what I should be watching instead, let me know as well. Leave a like, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you next time.